Here's a quick tip on opening Pro Tools sessions from network volumes. Prior to Pro Tools 10, the only drives that you could actually open and run a session from were built-in internal hard drives or firewire drives. If you were connected to a drive over the network, and you had a session that you wanted to open, you first had to copy it locally. With Pro Tools 10 and later, you can now even open a session from a drive that's connected over Wi-Fi. Right now, I have this drive here connected via Wi-Fi from my Mac Pro Tower. If I open this drive up, I've got a session right here that I can open, and I can just double-click it, and Pro Tools will launch it directly from the network volume. This is a raw OMF from a short film. I can just go right on ahead and hit play and take a listen to my session. Pro Tools has always identified drives by three different permission types. Playback, transfer, and record. These options are viewable from the workspace window. If we go to the window menu and we choose new workspace, we can see right now that both hard drives currently visible here, the one network drive and the local hard drive, are set to permissions of record. The other options here being transfer and playback. Transfer, of course, means that you can only transfer data from that drive, and historically, that was the only option for network drives. Playback clearly means that you can play back from the drive but cannot record to it, and record gives you full permissions for the drive. By default here in Pro Tools 11, I am able to access a network drive in record mode. This gives me full capability to work with sessions over a network. And in this case, even Wi-Fi. I don't even need to be plugged in. The other key feature of Pro Tools 10 and later that is enabling this to function so brilliantly is disk cache. Disk cache is a function that allows Pro Tools to load all of the media of the currently opened session into active RAM thereby alleviating any need to read and write from the hard drive, or in this case, the remote network volume. Clearly, this has tremendous implications for the speed with which you can play back a session and the reliability. In order to configure disk cache, you need to go to Setup, Playback Engine, and under Disk Playback, choose a cache size. I've currently got it set to 3 gigs, which means that I have allocated 3 gigs of my computer's available RAM to be used for caching the media of the open session. The default choice, normal, will also allow me to open sessions over network drives, but it won't necessarily give me the performance that I'm looking for if the session is on the large side and has a lot of media playing at any given time. If I hit OK right now in the playback engine, the disk cache bar of my system usage window disappears. I'm still able to play my session, but if I had a significant amount of media in the session at any given time, it may well start giving me playback errors because there's not enough bandwidth available to play the media from the remote drive. So if I go back to Setup and Playback Engine, I'll set my disk cache up to, say, 2 gigs in this case, and hit OK. And now, under the system usage window, we have a disk cache bar, and we can see that it's slowly filling up here. Once it has fully loaded the active session into RAM, this bar will turn green. Of the 2 gigs that I have allocated, it's currently loaded up 4%, now 5%. And momentarily, it will have loaded the entire session into active RAM and still have plenty left over because this session's rather small. Here we've capped off at 7% of active RAM, the bar has turned green, and now my entire session is in active memory and is no longer reading directly from the network drive. This is an incredibly useful feature anytime you've got a session that you want to simply open and take a quick look at, but you don't necessarily want to copy it to your local hard drive. Playing back from network disks and other disk types is a truly liberating new capability of Pro Tools 11. That's it for this quick tip.